Welcome to Lesson 1, Awareness. This is Samantha Lorance. I want you to find a comfortable seated posture or maybe legs up the wall position to start. From here, I want you to find your breath, the inhales and exhales. And on each exhale, I want you to let go of the day. If you come across a lot of pain or tension, focus on the exhale, maybe even exhaling out the mouth. Let's practice this. Inhaling deeply into the rib cage, lifting up through the heart, and then opening the mouth with it. Let's try that again. Inhaling deeply, exhaling out the mouth. If you have a lot of pain in a certain area, maybe placing the hands where the pain is residing, and then we exhale out the mouth from here. to deepen the breath now a little bit more with the yogic breathing. Bringing one hand onto the belly and one hand onto the chest. Squeezing our thighs together a little bit just to engage the lower abdominals. From here we want to breathe into the navel. Imagine we have a balloon inside the belly and we're going to inhale into the belly button and then exhale out the belly button deflating the balloon. Let's go a little bit deeper this time. Inhale into the navel, the ribs, and the chest. And exhale from the belly, the ribs, and the chest. Continue this yogic breath. the legs up the wall. Let's take a couple moments here to let go of the yogic breathing and come onto the sides of the body. If you're in a comfortable seated posture, taking a couple more breath, yogic breaths here. Very slowly, let's all come up to standing on our mat. Please take your time. With the feet, mat width apart, and if you don't have a mat, maybe two or three feet apart. Having the toes pointing forward, just swaying from side to side, shifting the weight from the left to the right, noticing where the body weight is. You can start to move the arms as little or as much as you'd like to, rolling the shoulders or keeping the shoulders very still. Let's play a little bit. Imagine you have a basketball and you want to push the basketball in a figure eight around the body and actually going through the spine and catching it on the other side. Kind of like you used to do maybe when you used to have the ball, basketball kind of figurating in between the legs. Move here in a joint free manner, just opening the shoulders, opening the hips, whatever needs to be open today. But again, always being gentle to yourself and honoring where you are. Let's do this a couple more times, really warming up the body. start to slow down, making smaller movements, and shaking that last bit of tension out of the body. So from here, you can utilize a block, a book, a couple books, or maybe a stair. If you're doing it on a staircase, please make sure you're on a bottom stair, and there's no other stairs beneath you. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Find your balance on that right leg. Start to swing the left leg. When you swing the left leg forward, you want the right arm coming forward. Now be careful. If we start to cross the arm and leg across the body, we lose balance and fall off of the block. So really focusing on getting the hands moving straight forward and the legs. And you can bounce. 
mats a little bit, bring the heel off the ground, noticing if we have a nice soft bend in that right leg. Let's go to the other side. So standing up on the block with the left foot, finding your balance, maybe having your eye gaze at one unmoving point in front of you. Drop the shoulders away from the air, squeeze inner thighs. Inhale, the left arm comes forward as the right leg moves forward, and then exhale, we start to swing. Now you can tell in this, I start to cross everything over the body, the leg and the arms, I start to lose balance. So here I bend the elbows and I start to really pull that right knee up towards my chest so that way I don't start to lose balance. If you do lose balance like I just did, you just drop the foot to the ground and start over. Again, every day this may feel different and so just be nice to yourself. Ooh, let's play this other one. So we're gonna rotate our hips in a circle and we're trying not to move the shoulders. This way we can move and kind of open up any tension that we may have in the hips. Maybe we have a little tension in the back or the obliques in the pelvic area. Sometimes this even pulls down into my quad, the front side of the leg and hamstring. So just nice big circles here. Imagining you have a hula hoop around you and you want to make sure that you grab all the hula hoop with your hips. Let's go the other direction a couple times. You can bring the arms forward if you like. I'm going to demo a couple different positions you can have your hands. Some are fingertips on the shoulders. Here, like I'm holding a tray, so I'm trying not to drop the tea tray. Let's go to the other side. Bringing the left foot up onto the block, squeezing the inner thighs, tucking the shoulders. This time I have my arms out straight and see how this feels. This is kind of a nice way to start to strengthen the arms if you don't have any tension on the shoulders or tension in the upper spine. Breathe. Keep rotating the circles. Let's go the other direction here with the hips. Really making big circles to open up and move into anything that doesn't feel right today. You can shift the weight all the way around the foot that's on the block. Notice my toes are lifting. I'm really pushing down on that foot that is attached to the block. Let's do that one more time around. Dropping the shoulders, finding Tadasana, engaging fingertips. Let's grab a hold of the block now and place it in between the inner thighs. Now, if you don't have a block at home, you can always use a water bottle, you can use um, a plastic cup, just something to remind yourself, or even a cushion. And we're going to walk forward with the block or the cushion, whatever you have, a rolled up sweatshirt in between the inner thighs. So that way we know that we're squeezing the inner thighs. We want to roll the hip up towards the rib cage and roll forward with the hip, getting a nice range of motion here. Still utilizing the arms. Let's bring that block or whatever you have in between the inner calf. So we want to always go above the knee or below the knee. So really focusing on the arms, trying to get the arms involved with the hips, lifting the hip up towards the rib cage. Sometimes we have to readjust the block and that's okay. Let's go back now. Just a couple feet. Now some of us do a penguin walk where we just rock from side to side. We want to make sure not to do that. It doesn't feel too good for our bodies. We want to readjust the way we walk. So really engaging the muscles in our torso and legs. Let's go ahead and release the block to the side. Eye gaze is forward. Standing tall in Tadasana, pulling that right knee up and towards the chest, squeezing the inner thighs together. Inhale, let's straighten the leg, and exhale, bending. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, and exhale. And one more time, inhale, straightening the leg, exhale, bending the knee, and let's release that right leg down to the ground and go to the left side. Inhale, pulling the left knee in towards the chest, keeping the shoulders tucked away from the ears. And straightening your leg as we inhale. Exhale, bend the knee. Again, inhale, straightening. 
exhale bending one more time inhale straighten the leg exhale bend the knee and release the left foot down to the ground good now we're coming onto the knees we're going to bring that right leg out to the side the left knee is directly underneath the left hip inhale lift the left arm up towards the ceiling exhale drop the left shoulder away from the ear and then pushing through the left knee lift the rib cage up and then we exhale tip over to the right belly button in and up squeezing inner thighs take the outside of that left armpit rotate into the chest so the palm actually rotates backwards elbow rotates forward to go deeper you want to bring the center of the chest and chin up towards the ceiling for a slight twist keep breathing inhale we're going to lift up bring that left hand down and heel toe the right foot forward into a runner's lunge and then we want to have that right foot a little bit the ankle in front of the knee so then that way when we bend the knee directly over the ankle the left knee is behind the left hip <clears throat> if you want to you can bring the arms out to the side wrist wider than elbows elbows wider than shoulders and then you start to gently kick the left shin into the ground rotate the elbows forward for a deeper back bend a modification to intensify this pose is a straight in the left leg squeezing her thighs belly button in and up towards the rib cage again you can bring the arms out to the side rotate the elbows forward so the shoulders draw down the spine and hold here and breathe if not bring that left knee back down to the ground now moving into a forward fold you want to drop the torso and rest the whole of your body weight on that right quad or if you need to going to the inside of the right leg if you need to from here you're going to flex the right toes towards the head push the ball of the foot forward inhale reach the heart forward tuck the shoulders away from the ears and then exhale sink a little bit deeper by simply straightening that right leg a little breathe deep letting go of any tension in the hamstring slide that right leg back sitting back for a moment and just noticing how you feel okay let's lift back up onto the knees bring that left leg out make sure the right knee is directly underneath the hip inhale right arm sweeps up towards the ceiling exhale drop the shoulder squeeze inner thighs start to push through the right knee and tip over to the left outside the armpit rotates into the chest chin to the center of the chest and then we're going to lift the center of the chest up towards the ceiling and find that deep stretch here relax the shoulders and arms keep the core engaged inhale let's lift back up to center heel toe that left foot forward into a runner's lunge and again remember the ankle is in front of the knee at first and then we're going to bend that left knee so it's directly over the ankle and the right knee is behind the right hip good breathe here gently kicking into that right shin if you would like bringing those arms out to the side elbows rotating forward so the shoulders roll down the back and we have a nice little back bend here again if you want to intensify you're going to simply curl that left right toe into the mat and lift that right knee off the ground and breathe so whatever modification works for you today let's take a couple more breaths here and then slowly releasing that right knee back down relaxing the torso onto the left leg or on the inside of the left leg as you see i'm doing here another option is to have a block or a stool or just something you need to have the hands on so this way we can tuck the shoulders away from the ears keep the core engaged squeezing in our thighs or you can rest the torso on the block and work from there so whatever the hamstring tension is today please modify it for where you are i always enjoy grabbing the big toe pulling it back towards me and then pushing the ball of the foot forward so the big toe is pushing into the peace fingers this just kind of helps me intensify the hamstring stretch and make sure that i am engaging that left quad Let's heel toe that left knee back and release into child's pose. Hips to heels. 
relaxing the forehead and forearm onto the mat. From child's pose, let's come all the way up into a seated posture. You can do this by simply folding over a blanket or rolling up a blanket. If you do have a yoga mat, rolling up two thirds of a yoga mat with one of those thicker ones. If you're really tight, using a blanket can help. But in this position, I kind of like to have no blanket underneath me, pulling out any excess fleshy parts away from the sit bones. Bring the thumbs underneath the armpits, dropping them to the ribcage, and lifting up through the fingers will help lift the spine. From here, you're going to start to stack left ankle on top of right, right ankle on top of left, squeezing the block. What we're trying to do is not move the shoulders here, so if you need to, place the hands on the ground for support. Let's go to the next exercise. Placing a blanket underneath that right glute if you need to. Both legs are kicked over to the right. I kind of don't like a blanket underneath my glute just because I'm starting to open up in the hips here. So I just place the blanket away. What we're doing is right glute root into the earth and then you just squeeze the right glute and that rotates the right glute off the ground and then you relax and bring it back to the mat. And we just keep doing this a couple times to kind of massage out any tension in the psoas, sacral, and hip flexor area, just in that pelvic area. From here, you're going to straighten the left leg and cross the right shin across the left quad, lifting up through the heart, bending the elbows backwards, and just opening up in a figure four stretch. To intensify, you're going to start to stack the shoulders on top of the hips. To lessen the intensity, you start to walk the hands back a little bit, but keep the heart lifted. Let's go to the other side. Just simply drop the legs over to the left, making sure you flex the left toe towards the knee. From here again, squeezing the left glute to lift the hip off the ground, relaxing the left glute to bring it back onto the ground. And the torso naturally twist here, squeezing and relaxing, opening up any tension in the glutes. From here, we're gonna straighten that right leg, crossing the left shin across the right quad, lifting up through the heart, and then start to bend that left, right knee and lift up through the heart center. Flex the toes towards the knees and just exhale out any tension in that left glute. Breathe easy. From here, we're gonna bring the soles of the feet together and come in cobbler's pose. Now, if you don't have a blanket already underneath your hips, I really like a blanket here, or again, a rolled up, blank, uh, a rolled up pillow or a rolled up mat. Grabbing a hold of the ankles, the closer the heels are to the torso, the more intense this pose is, the further away, the less intense. If you're really open here, you can drop your elbows all the way to the inner thighs or inner calf, never on the knee, and open up. As you can see here, I can't quite get my elbows to my calves, so I'm dropping one shoulder at a time to intensify the stretch. Cobbler's pose helps open up the pelvic floor, so it's kind of stretching out the psoas area. So from here, we're gonna go into a lotus stretch. If you are not flexible enough to drop the hips all the way in between the ankles, I want you to bring yourself up. You can utilize a chair to do this. You can do as I'm doing and sitting on a block. You can sit on anything that you need to or if flexibility allows, nothing at all. We want to eventually stack the shoulders on top of hips, hips in between the heels. If you want to stretch a little bit more into the neck or shoulders, you can look over the shoulders. This is one of my favorite variations. It's called a uh, catcher stretch. And you just have the knees directly over ankles, and you can drop again the shoulders towards the ground, pushing into the inner thigh, again, never on the knee. And this will help stretch the inner thighs as well, again, opening up that so as area. It's also a great way to open up the low back and stretch the sciatic area. From here, we're gonna move all the way onto our backs and we're gonna start working with some pelvic tilts today. So bending the knees, making sure the soles of the feet are on the ground. And just lifting the head and shoulders off the ground. You see me here trying to touch my heels. You want just barely to be able to touch your heels. 
You can place, again, a water bottle, a rolled up sweatshirt, or a pillow in between the inner thighs to squeeze the inner thighs towards each other. And then from here, you can notice that I have a nice little pelvic tilt going. As I exhale, I flatten the spine into the ground, and then inhale, relaxing the spine. Let's do this together. Exhale, flatten the spine into the earth. Inhale, relaxing the spine. Sometimes we do need a blanket underneath the head. This is usually the only time we need it is when the neck is lifted really high up towards the ceiling. Exhale, flattening the spine. Inhale, relaxing the spine. Continue your pelvic tilts with or without the block. Now release the blanket away from the head. And do a couple more pelvic tilts, noticing how that feels. And if you need to, bring a block back in between the inner thighs. From here, you're gonna flatten the spine into the ground, squeeze the inner thighs towards each other, and then stack the knees directly on top of the hips. On your inhale, you're gonna lift that left leg up. Exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, lift the right leg straight up towards the ceiling. Exhale, bend the knee. Make sure we keep the spine flat into the ground. Inhale, straightening the left leg. Exhale, bending the knee. Inhale, straightening the right leg. And exhale, bending the knee. So what we're doing here is we're just really engaging the core. The big key here is to keep the spine flat into the ground and squeezing of the inner thighs. We'll really focus on getting that pelvic floor engaged so that way we can start doing our mula bandha and that way we can start walking around with maybe um, a little less pain or just a little bit more stability in our lower torso area. Let's inhale, take a full body stretch, reach the toes forward, fingertips to the back of the room, stretch it out, and then exhale, doing any other movements the body may need at this time. So we're gonna finish off class with legs up the wall. So please, find a wall or a couch is always nice. Something that you can put the legs up on. One of my other favorites is in bed. I just get up on bed, put my legs up against the headboard. And we're gonna go into supine cobblers here just to open those inner thighs a little bit more. So soles of the feet together, knees apart. You can bring the arms in line with the ears. You can clasp fingertips behind the head. You can even bring the arms to cactus like we did at the beginning of class. And just breathe here. You can move the heels further up the wall for a less intense stretch. Slide the heels closer towards the torso for a more intense stretch. And breathe. Maybe moving back to that yogic breath if you'd like that we started with class. Inhale, belly, ribs, chest. Exhaling, belly, ribs, and chest. If you start to open in the body here, you can slide the heels a little bit closer to you. If not, just keep the legs where they are. Keep breathing. So let's straighten the legs up the wall now. Shave the legs out, do anything you need to make the body feel better. If you want to stay here for Shavasana, maybe getting a little closer to the wall if you need to. Or if you want to take Shavasana away from the wall, you can scoot away from the wall and come onto the right or left side of the body for a couple breaths. Shavasana is a time to relax the body, to allow ourselves to absorb all the good that we've just done for ourselves. So tune into the inhales and exhales. You can either take 10 more breaths here, or if you would like, in about five to 10 minutes, I will ring a bell at five minute mark, a 10 minute mark, and a 
15 minute 